Well, hello there all. There's no easy way to dance around this, so let's just call it out. It's been a long time since I've made a video. There have been many factors that have made that the case, but for now, I think it's time we just move forward and make the best out of it all. So, anyway... Anyway? What do you mean, anyway? Alright, thanks, Maria. I'm sorry, I really am. But there's a lot of good reasons for why it's been so long. But hey, I'm here now, so let's do it. Let's talk more about Silent Hill. As always, we'll be focusing on the music and pulling in inspiration from my last two videos. On this episode, it's all about Silent Hill 3. For those of you who are huge fans of the soundtrack, you'll remember that the third game featured several songs with lyrics, making it stand out from the first two entries from Team Silent. In turn, the lyrics and the tracks are constantly discussed in the community and for good reason. This will not be the time we deep dive into the lyrics of the tracks in Silent Hill 3 though. That's a completely separate conversation that should receive its own video, and that will happen, I promise. I really, really promise. But here and now, we can set the stage for that discussion. I wanted to talk about something that doesn't get covered as much, and that's Silent Hill 3's subtle but manipulative use of songs with lyrics. Yamaoka has two very distinct methods of lulling us in, the players, and Heather with a false sense of security. Now, as I said before, the words to the songs are full of conversation starters, but right now, what we need to be most curious about is why there are lyrics this time. Essentially, I would like to explore what the purpose is in having them more than what they actually mean. Did Yamaoka bring on Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, the vocalist behind the game's tracks in question, just for a change of pace? Or does having a singer, and more importantly, a woman, mean anything? Believe it or not, as much as I love to theorize, I try to get as many facts out of a topic that I can, and when it came to this aspect of Silent Hill 3, that actually proved to be pretty hard. I initially was searching for reasons why the lyrics were incorporated, and that came up short. However, I did run across something that proved to be rather interesting. For as long as I can remember, I just thought Yamaoka brought on McGlynn and had her write lyrics for some interesting color, making the entire purpose to bring a more modern aesthetic to the game. And actually, the line of thinking is what brought me to this concept. Last video, which you can watch using the card at the top right corner of the screen, thank you so much, we talked about Silent Hill 3's use of Silent Hill 1's score to create an experience that sounds like the old world mixing with the new world. Essentially, young, hip Heather dealing with her sordid past. While that theme is present listening to any track from the game, the old world mixing with the new is also happening with the lyrics, and more specifically, the singer bringing them to life. 10 out of the 26 songs on the soundtrack feature lyrics, but for our purposes we're only going to include 9. Sorry, hometown, you're an outlier and maybe we'll talk about you someday, but probably not. Now, while each of the 9 songs was sung by Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, Yamaoka wrote all of the lyrics, and I mean all of them. As we'll soon discuss, some of the tracks feature words that I used to think McGlynn wrote as a song meant for use outside of Silent Hill 3, but nope. Yamaoka's behind it all. So why is that important? Well, my theory is Yamaoka has her playing two characters, each with their own set of goals, invitation and indoctrination. Let's start with the invitation songs, You're Not Here, Letter From Lost Days, and I Want Love. They all share a distinct difference from the other lyrical tracks. When you delve into the lyrics, they don't seem to be referencing anything connected to the game. Now, before people have a meltdown and jump into the comments, there are connections, but I'm talking on a surface level. The other set of songs of lyrics will further expand on my point, but anyway, just had to throw that out there. Anyway, Maria, stop it. You made your point. We're done. Thanks. All three of the previously mentioned tracks offer a take on complicated romance, which is a staple genre for angsty teens to listen to. They're catchy, feature a unique beat, and have lyrics that we can identify with in our own way. Like, in Letter from Lost Days, maybe you have a friend named Colleen that you've had Rocky Pass with, I don't know. Or in You're Not Here, lines like, Love was never meant to be such a crazy affair, and Never thought I'd sit around and cry for your love are pretty standard love tropes. Basically, the game features music that is pretty relatable, which is not something we saw in the last two games. Those tracks were all about building tension and building the atmosphere, so what's going on here? Invitation. 
It's not random that the opening song for the game is You're Not Here. With its rocking music and relatable lyrics, it offers a warmer and less intimidating hand to us players. It conditions us to hear McGlynn's voice and think, oh yeah, she's my kind of girl. And that's exactly where Yamaoka gets you. This brings us to the other goal, indoctrination. The tracks Float Up From Dream, Breeze and Monochrome Night, Clockwork Little Happiness, Dance With Night Wind, Walk On Vanity Ruins, and Sun fall into this category. Much like the first three tracks we talked about, these songs feature McGlynn's voice, but the lyrics are far more otherworldly and hard to swallow. She swapped out the musings of love loss for lyrics like, there is another reason to fill your heart with hatred. I mean, we all know love and relationships can be hard, but I'm pretty sure you will birth a god and build an eternal paradise isn't a common turn of phrase for that genre. So what the hell is going on? Why would Yamaoka have the same singer for both types of songs? She seems like two different people. It's actually quite brilliant and something that I never really thought about until researching this. There's a sneaky form of propaganda going on here. Using McGlynn for both types of tracks lets us listen more closely and accept the more off-the-wall things that are being said in the indoctrination tracks. Just like Heather, we need convincing that what we're being told through the music holds truth. Now, I mean, let's think about it in real-world terms. It happens all the time with musical artists. We love their music, and they do a brand deal with Coca-Cola or something, and in the back of our minds we think, hmm, maybe I should drink that too. That's why companies go after artists to promote their products. Yamaoka is doing something very similar here, and while it's not selling a product, it's definitely selling an idea. And of course, as players, we don't take this to be real truth. We don't believe that there is a real cult that we can follow and try to birth a god with. I mean, if anyone tries to do that with you, I would say run for the hills. Silent Hill. Okay. No, what Yamaoka is doing is very subtle and again, very brilliant because we need to step into the mindset of Heather. And while she may not be hearing these songs that we're hearing, we're actually getting into her emotional complexity and emotional state by hearing the songs in the way that they're being given to us. Like I said, we have the two types of songs, invitation and indoctrination. We're welcomed, we feel comfortable, we feel enticed because we have relatable lyrics, and again, pop ballad type songs. But then on top of that, we have these very strange otherworldly tracks that don't exactly make a lot of sense, but they're trying to sell us something that maybe we don't want to believe in. This directly parallels Heather's journey in the game, as she has to accept her past and her reality are not exactly the same. We can actually step into the emotional shoes of our protagonist through something other than gameplay and cutscenes. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that Yamaoka is literally trying to brainwash people into believing the Silent Hill cult's ideas. All I mean is that as part of the experience of the game, he's once again taken sound direction to a new level. I find this to be just as true and even more confirming when looking at how it affects Heather. Here we have a character that is pushing her fate away as hard as possible because she wants to live in the reality that she has known for her whole life, a teen and just live like everyone else. Those songs in the invitation category could be seen as musical representations of Heather's normalcy, with their angst and focus on love, while the indoctrination tracks are the old world, or Silent Hill, calling for her. We're active participants with Heather, even on a musical level this way, as the soundtrack created for us is another representation of Heather's struggle. Come on, I mean, I think this is rad. And then we have McGlynn, this equally welcoming and terrifying siren for both us and Heather to listen to. While not a lyric track technically, I think the idea is brought out beautifully in Lost Carol, a haunting but enticing vocal performance from McGlynn, inviting us to the story of Silent Hill 3 and everything it has to offer. <sighs> But of course, I'm sure many of you are anticipating a video on the lyrics themselves, and like I said, it will happen. But I might take a detour and cover some material from Silent Hill 4 next. 
Regardless, I just want to thank you all so much for watching. We're as so close to 500 subscribers, which overall is a crazy concept for me. My channel is very niche, so I never expected to get the great feedback I have. And more than that, I've been gone for so long that I didn't think people would still be searching for my videos. So thank you, it really means a lot, truly. And with how my life is now, I'm hoping I can return to being more consistent. Feel free to let me know what you thought of this video and possibly other games you'd like to hear me talk about. You can chat with me on my socials too, or not. I don't know, do what makes you happy.